So I was looking around on eBay for some projects and I found this four parts MacBook that was listed for just $22. And I was like, yeah, of course I'm gonna buy this thing for $22. So I don't really know very much about this machine. It was listed as a mid 2010 15 inch that needs a battery and storage. And I thought, okay, for 20 bucks, those are some pretty cheap parts. And this could probably be a pretty decent little machine for less than 50 bucks all in. All right, so condition here honestly looks pretty good. We do have a pretty noticeable scratch on the lid, but doesn't look terrible overall. Let's open it up and check out the inside. Now straight away here, this is why I bought this computer. Having an anti-glare display for 20 bucks, I couldn't say no. And honestly, this thing looks like it's in really good shape. We've got four gigs of RAM installed here and sure enough, no hard drive. So of course I've got a 256 gigabyte micro center SSD. I love these things. They're super cheap. This one I think I managed to grab with one of those free SSD coupons that pop up from time to time. So this is literally $0 that are now going into this machine. I don't have the mounting screws, so I might have to find some of those, but theoretically that is most of the work that this machine needs. All right, well, it's booting. Took a second there when I plugged it in and it didn't turn on, I was a little nervous. All right, we're booted into the Catalina installer here. So let's go ahead and format our new drive and install Mac OS. So we're now installing a patched version of Mac OS Catalina and we're only gonna need a few parts to get this $22 MacBook back up to spec. First, we're gonna need a replacement battery. We're also gonna need some mounting screws for the hard drive and we need case screws because those are all missing. So while I go and find those things, let's get a quick word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Sihu and their new Doro C300 ergonomic office chair. Featuring flexible backrest and built-in lumbar cushion, the C300 is a great option for those looking for maximum value. You've got 3D coordinated armrests with ultra soft padding and lateral adjustment, a mechanical angled headrest, and dynamically self-adjusting lumbar and backrest support. This is my favorite part of the chair because it makes sure that your lower back is supported no matter what angle you're at. Whether you're working from home or gaming or reading a good book, the C300 can adapt to your situation with ease. To help you maximize comfort and minimize pain points today, see who is offering a 6% discount right now. Just check out the link in the description below and use my coupon code to activate this offer. A big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video and supporting my lower back. Staying comfortable is key to being able to edit all of these YouTube videos, so it is much appreciated. And with that, let's get back into the video. So let's now turn our attention to our list of parts, starting with a battery. And if you want to get a nice, genuine OEM used battery, it's going to be about $25 to $30. And that's not necessarily a problem, but with a machine this cheap, I want to go even cheaper. So I found this battery for just $13, including shipping. Now this battery is not going to be in very good health. It's probably going to say service recommended, but that doesn't mean that it won't be fine for a build this cheap. And then aside from the battery, I found some hard drive screws and case screws for literally a dollar each. And I didn't even end up using these because I just scavenged some from all of the many machines I have. So once all of the parts arrived, I correctly mounted our hard drive and installed our new battery. And with the machine set up, I went to download some benchmarking tools so we could get an idea of how usable this thing is. However, a lot of applications are starting to lose support for macOS Catalina, and when I opened Cinebench, it crashed so hard it kernel panicked the computer. So I decided that we are going to try something new. We're gonna put macOS Ventura on this $20 MacBook. So I grabbed the OpenCore Legacy Patcher, which allows you to very easily download and create a bootable installer for macOS Ventura. And after 40 minutes waiting for this thing to install, we have macOS Ventura running on a 13-year-old MacBook Pro. 
And here it is, our $22 MacBook is now running macOS Ventura, and I'm honestly shocked at how well this came out given the price point we're talking about here. First of all, this machine is in amazing cosmetic condition. This is something that is always a gamble when you buy used because the pictures don't always show it, but I'm very pleased with how nice this machine looks. And to be honest, a lot of what makes this machine look so nice is that anti-glare display. That really is a nice thing to have here. So if you don't know, the anti-glare display was a $100 upgrade that Apple started offering in 2009 for the 15 and 17 inch MacBook Pros. And in addition to having a matte finish, which significantly cuts down on reflections, you also get these silver bezels, which I think are rather fetching, and the screen is a higher resolution. Normal 15 inch MacBook Pros of this time period are 1440 by 900. This guy is 1680 by 1050, and it is a much, much better resolution. Not only is it more sharp, but things are spaced out better. The screen looks really, really good. The colors even look really, really good. I mean, look at it side by side with the 15 inch MacBook Air. You wouldn't think that these displays are 13 years apart, but they are. And sure, you can definitely see the difference in quality when you turn the lights off. The black levels and the contrast, of course, are not gonna be as good on this display, but it's pretty crazy that you can make that comparison and this machine, which costs less than $50, doesn't even look that bad. There are brand new Windows laptops shipping right now that cost 10 times what this thing costs that have worse displays. So the display is clearly the highlight, but how is this machine to use? Well, we're running a first generation Core i7. It's a dual core chip, but it's hyper-threaded. So it's not quite as anemic as using a Core 2 Duo machine, but it's not that far off. I ran Cinebench R23 and that gave us a score of 800. So that's almost exactly one tenth the performance of the M2 chip in that test. Uh, yeah, so, so this is not a fast machine. I don't think anyone was expecting it to be, but just in case there was anyone out there who was harboring some confusion, you are not going to be impressed by the performance of this machine. But it does at least offer you access to some of the Apple ecosystem at an outrageously minimum price. Speaking of which, how much did I actually spend to get this machine fully working? Well, 22 bucks was the laptop. I paid $15 for shipping, and then I paid $13 for a battery. That's exactly 50 bucks. $50 all in, fully working MacBook Pro. And it is perfectly capable of browsing the internet, sending a couple emails, and looking at YouTube videos. That's one quarter the price of upgrading the RAM in a new MacBook Air, and you're getting an entire computer. So do I recommend doing something like this? Absolutely, and here's how. So let's talk about how you can replicate this experiment. How do you find these super cheap but functional MacBooks? Well, the way that I found this one was actually very simple. Just go on eBay, type in MacBook, nothing else. You want it to be as vague as possible because we're just gonna use filters. So from here, we're gonna select buy it now. Then we're gonna sort by price lowest first and automatically eBay is going to streamline the search results to show you the best listings. So it's gonna find stuff like this, which seemingly is a working early 2011 MacBook Pro for 60 bucks, not a bad deal by any means. But if we click see more results, it's gonna really remove the filters and now we're seeing absolutely everything. I mean, look at these destroyed MacBook palm rests with missing keys. I don't know what's going on here. We've got empty boxes. These are the eBay search results pages where I often find some of the best stuff. It's not well worded, it's not well photographed, but it can sometimes be a really good deal. So we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna look for thumbnails that are kind of like this. Now, I personally, I would not buy a 2006 MacBook to use. It's not really gonna do very much, but it does illustrate the thumbnail here. We have a screen on and it's searching for a hard drive. This is a really easy way to tell that A, the screen is working and not cracked, B, the logic board posts, it has RAM installed, 
and it's able to look for an operating system. So those are like four major functionality tests just by looking at this photo that this machine has passed. Here's another great example, $18 with $7 for shipping. We can already see that we have a good display, it's booted to a flashing folder, and the device looks to be in pretty good condition. Now this, as we can see from the bottom, having that battery hatch, this is actually a MacBook from 2008. So definitely an old machine, but you're talking like $25 to have this thing at your door, which needs a hard drive, a battery, and probably a RAM upgrade, and then you're good to go. Or at least you're probably good to go. There is still the chance that you could find some other functional issue with a machine like this. But the nice thing about buying MacBooks this cheap is the parts to repair them are also cheap. So let's say you spend $25 and you get a 2010 15-inch MacBook Pro like mine and you need to replace the logic board. At a quick search here, this one is $60. Granted, that's three times more than I paid for the machine, but that's not hugely expensive to repair literally the most expensive component in the machine. Here's another pretty decent option, 2009 MacBook Pro for $35. And the condition here from these photos honestly doesn't look that bad either. You can also look for stuff like this. This is about 50 bucks with shipping. And this one is actually complete. You can see we have a 256 gigabyte SSD and four gigs of RAM installed here. The description from the seller says there are two unresponsive keys. And that means you have a number of options. You could buy an entire top case and switch everything over, or you could buy just a keyboard. They're literally like $13 to replace those and they just unscrew from the top case. It's a bit of work, but you could get that machine fixed up for 13 bucks. And you can do the same exact method at a slightly higher budget. For example, this is a 15 inch mid 2012, also with that wonderful anti-glare display. And this one isn't even listed for parts. It just says booted to internet recovery and the SSD was erased, no further testing. 130 bucks. That is not a bad deal. And this one already has eight gigs of RAM, so just slap an SSD in there, maybe a battery if needed, and you're good to go. So hopefully these examples illustrate that you can absolutely get a working, usable MacBook for less than $100, significantly less. That is a truly remarkable thing. And obviously these are older machines. A lot of the examples I showed you had Core 2 Duo. So you don't have a massive expectation that the performance is going to be very good, but if you need a spare machine or you wanna tinker around or you wanna do jailbreaking of old iOS devices and you need a Mac that has an old version of OS X, you can absolutely find these machines for very little money. So I hope you found this video helpful and entertaining. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this project. Would you do something like this yourself? And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.